welcome everybody to the Drop Dad Podcast. Uh, I'm one and a half of your hetero life mate, Tri- Tro- Troy. <laughs> Do you want to try that again? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was just showing you that I was I can mess up and and just were you just doing smooth. it to make me feel better? Yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, welcome everybody to the Drop Dad Podcast. Uh, I'm one half of your hosting team. Um, this is Troy, obviously. Uh, Troy, give a wave. Um, Tro- Troy has his you- Troy. Troy, you don't have very many nicknames, but we know that you don't like the one that I said. Yep. Okay. All right. So I won't say that one. What What, what is like the equivalent of the male princess wave? It was called it the microwave. Right. She invented the microwave. You could also heat your food in it. Yeah. She she invented the microwave. That's the joke. That's a that's a that's a pretty good dad, solid dad joke. Yeah. Not not a lot of nicknames for me. I mean, Troy's pretty short. To I mean, what are you going to shorten it to? Ass. Yeah. I always got Kevin Pevin Kevin Pevin Seven Eleven, and then I would always get a twelve in in there. That was just that was just my twelve in. Yeah. The, yeah, they would say the whole gambit of those, and I'd just be like, "Shut up!" And I'd go take my Power Rangers elsewhere. <laughs> so, I would I, Home Alone, Kevin McAllister, yeah. Heaven. <gasps> oh my God! It's a conspiracy. I actually, I actually like when I was reading it. I was like, in New York, no way. <laughs> Maybe his dad owns that building. <laughs> <laughs> Named after a famous McAllister. It's like that, uh, the Pepe, Pepe uh, the Pepe, always sunny. Pepe meme. Sylvia. Pe- yeah, Pepe Sylvia. Pepe meme. Sylvia. Pepe Sylvia. <laughs> well, so uh, hey, we. Uh, uh, what, what, what do we got, Troy? <laughs> I I don't know. It's your show. We got beer. All right. Yeah. Let's do the beer. We did just so we're a, a little off kilter because usually we record these back to back, but mm-hmm. in between. Recording these episodes, we went out and fixed my lawnmower with Jeff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we we didn't even tell any kids to get off the lawn. We just uh, hopped yeah. right in. Yeah, and it worked like a dream. I was just like, I don't know if what he's doing is gonna work. It looks I, like he's just taking it apart and putting it back together, and then it worked. I was like, damn it, that guy's a miracle worker. <laughs> That's what I thought too. Because he just and Jeff, if you're watching, thanks for fixing my lawnmower. Appreciate you. But like, <sighs> yeah, he just blew out some stuff, some crud. He's like, oh yeah. That, yeah. Get a little grit in there, and he got the grit out, and it fucking runs like a dream. Doesn't now. seem like it should work, but it does. It worked. All right, so let's let's hop right into these beers. Uh, that's the last time I questioned Jeff's abilities. Uh, okay, so yeah, I saw these at the store. I thought it'd be refreshing. A little tangerine squeezer from Highlander Beer uh, Brewing Company, a Radler style ale with tangerines. Is four four percent the- alcohol. Perfect summer beer. Is there a snake in here? There's a snake in my beer. There's a snake in my boot. This one. Oh, you're going to get all the AM- ASMR on that one. I don't like ASMR things. I really don't. Like, I saw, like, a, a very, very, like, super model woman eating fried chicken once. And I was like, oh, I can't do Amara? it. I don't know. She was just eating fried chicken, and it was just like, <laughs> and I was like, I can't do it. I just can't. I don't get the appeal. No, I don't either. You just get like people like they're flipping things and they're like, and they're doing that. And the, yeah, like the, it's like really bad foley. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Or like you get like like ones where like they'll fill up the toilet with cleaner bowl, like toilet bowl with cleaner, like, and then it'll just keep combining chemicals and making this like. That's how you colorful. get mustard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hate that. I like. I hate it when it's like or like the. Yeah. Anyway, I'll just bitch about the. The I, I mean, there's definitely an area on the internet for those type of things that people find that satisfying. The ones that get me power washing, I mm-hmm. love watching. The, yeah, I'm the rug you. cleanings. Have you played the power washing oh, simulator? Yeah. Dude, oh yeah, I got sucked so hard into that. Oh yeah, man, I, I, I sank probably a full forty hours into that game. I could. I, I was like, everybody went to sleep, and I was like. I just got a little bit of this playground left. And, and I was just like, psh, psh, psh. And I look, I'm like, fuck me. It's like after midnight. Like I was at it for like two more hours after I thought, like, I was just like, nah, I got a little bit left to go. That game is addicting. I yeah, didn't know it was going to be bad. that addicting. It's yeah. real bad. Um, Markiplier did a whole series on it. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So, so power washing, um, 
the, the people that clean the rugs oh, and they're yeah. like all fucking dirty. Yeah, and they're like they're like soot black. Yeah, yeah, yeah just and pitch black, and then they clean it up. Then it's like a, a vibrant kids rug. Yeah, 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 and you're like, what's underneath it? Like you would have <laughs> never guessed it. Oh yeah, those are great. I love those. And then uh, lawn mowing. I like watching. <laughs> People did you, do did, lawn did you see Lawn Mowing Simulator? That's another one. I, I have. I've played it. Oh, yeah. It is not as good as you'd want it to be. I wouldn't think so. I was like, I don't know if that's going to be as good as Power Wash Simulator. No, what, what they miss is that really the grass is long, but you can tell that there's like a strand every so far of grass. Mm-hmm. And you can't like cut cool patterns into it. You can't do no. the cool shit. You need the freedom. Yeah, and and maybe with a couple updates they'll get there. But I want to be able to cut a dick and balls into my lawn. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> TPP or TTP? Yeah, time to penis. Time to penis. Uh, that's a real metric. <laughs> it really is. Have you seen the TTP on that? <laughs> that show's actually really good. Uh, uh, oh my god, what's it called? I've only seen that clip. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, and thanks it's, Burke for for posting that clip. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's on Apple. It's like an Apple original show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really good. Um, Squirrel. Yeah. We talked about ADD last one. Here, uh, yeah, we, we can't help it. Like, when we don't have a guest, man, we're like... We're all over the place. Let's go all over the place. I I saw a TikTok today uh, about a show on Roku. Hmm. Uh, it's like the most dangerous game. So you know the concept of the most dangerous game, right? Like Yeah, like uh, setting people out on an island and then a, a rich old man hunts them. Yeah, but this yeah. one is based in Detroit. <laughs> and I don't know why that's funny. The bad guy in it, I can't I can never remember his name, but he's a really good actor. He's the he's the guy that played uh the Jew hunter in Inglorious Bastards. Oh, uh, that's, um, he's like a very famous, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, Christoph Waltz. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, So he is the bad guy in the most dangerous game that's set in Detroit. I thought you were going to say the bear Jew, like on on, (laughs) uh, Inglorious Bastards. No, no. And that movie was good. It was a really good movie. But I had a motherfucker, uh, spoil that movie for me. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, just came out in theaters and I was like, yeah, I'm going to go see it this weekend and, and, Spoiler if you haven't seen it, so earmuffs. I mean, it's but, like 10 years yeah, old now. Yeah, like 10 years old. But <laughs> it had just come out, and I was working with this guy, like, and uh, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go see it this weekend. He goes, all I'm going to say is Hitler, machine gun, Swiss cheese face. And I was like, okay, that's 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 a spoiler. Thanks. I uh, I don't need to see the movie that's now. That's the end of the movie. Yeah. That, that is what happens. That is the big thing at the end of the movie. <laughs> Uh, that that Hitler gets shot in the face a million times by uh, by the guys. And I, anyway, I've that was probably the biggest like spoiler I've ever had. Uh, that, that's a long. rough one, man. Just just some guy just being like that, that would be like uh uh I don't know what's a really famous movie that like you know the Sixth Sense. Yeah, Bruce Willis is a ghost that's the it. whole time. Yeah, yeah. Also spoiler, but that movie's like twenty years old. I'm gonna go see that movie in about an hour, and they'll be like, he's a ghost. He's a fucking ghost the whole time. He's like. You fuck. <laughs> I remember that dude. Anyway, fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> fuck that guy. If you're out, if you're one of those type of people, don't. Oh. Don't be that guy. <clears throat> I I had I, I got a story. I had an ex. I, I was like, I watched this movie and I was like, man, this is a really good movie. I bet John would like it. So she came along with me and I watched it with John, right? And when the credits open up. Like when it's starting up, and here's the title screen, right? She leans over to me and she goes, "Is this the one where he's like dead at the, where his brother's dead at the end?" But she said it really loudly, like she's like, "Oh, is this the one where he's, where the brother's dead at the end?" And I go, "Shut up!" <laughs> and then we watched the whole movie, and John was like, "Yeah, anyway, see you later, blah blah blah." And then I get a call, and John goes, "If she ever, ever, he's like, I'm never watching a movie with her ever again." <laughs> he, she, he, he was so pissed, and I don't blame him. No. And I was like, that was John. He said you fucked and ruined the movie. And yeah, and you shouldn't have done that. And that was stupid. Anyway, I don't oh like God. It. Yeah, that's that's the worst. Yeah. Don't don't be that guy. Yeah, it's like it's like five minutes. Like I could see if, you know, oh yeah, the movie's been out for a long time or whatever. Um, but like to be like, we're about to watch this movie that you know that they haven't seen or that you, the guy knew I hadn't seen it, and you just immediately say the ending, like do you get the opposite thing? Like every once in a while when I'm watching a movie with my wife, 
if it's one that I've seen and she hasn't, she'll be like, oh, well, what's going on there? Well, what's going on there? <laughs> and you have to like, oh, yeah, oh, navigate yeah. without, yeah, yeah. Spoiling. So Jess, Jess is just like, she will, she'll be like, just tell me, just tell me what's going on. No, like, watch the fucking me. movie. When we were playing, when we did, when we were doing Impossible Landscape, she would just be like, you need to fucking tell me what's going on. I'm like, no, I'm not. Uh, I only told her things that if they, like if they didn't you know ha- have any weight you know if it mm-hmm. wasn't a huge deal that she knows but like yeah she was I was just like you need to stop with the spoilers but sometimes she'll look up and she'll be like yeah I looked up who won on this episode of whatever you know the mass singer yeah she'll <laughs> like oh I already know who that is or I already know who won or whatever and I'll be like why do you do that yeah just enjoy the ride but she's it's very she's very proud of herself and she's like. I have not looked up a single thing about this so we can ride this together. And I'm like, that's great. I love yeah. it when you do that, but I hate it when you do the other thing and you Google like, oh, who, who won? Whatever. Because <laughs> then I'm just like, whoa, can you believe that? And she's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Or, or you get the, she just looks at you the whole time just waiting for you to get the yeah. realization in your face. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, that was me when I read it on the internet. <laughs> I was so surprised. Shocked. Yeah. John hates spoilers too. Like he, like, as mad as he got, like he will, if I'm like, man, I went and saw this movie. He prefers that I say zero words about it. Like not even like that. It was good. Like he does not want anybody to say whether something was good or bad because he likes to go in without, you know, blind without any, any He's on opinion. Yeah. And also he probably thinks that I'm like, if Kevin thinks it's good, then it's going to be crap. <laughs> <laughs> he said that to me before, but well, fuck, I can't go watch that movie now. I, I have a really like open, like, I, even if something's crap, I always like find something good about it, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of, I don't know. Your eternal optimist. Yeah. So John will be like, that was a garbage movie. I was like, I liked the last half of it. <laughs> the first half was stupid, but I'm, I'm, I really am an optimist. I can't help it. But it, it, That's not something to be ashamed of, man. There's a lot of people that can't see the world in a positive light. And, but I'm also like a realist. So mm-hmm. like when something, when shit's going down, like, Okay, fuck the car is broken down, and I'm, I'll just be like, uh, you know, I'll just start being like, okay, this needs to be cut, this needs to be cut. We need to restructure our lives right now, uh, and then I get really like, you know, so when the time calls for it, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm like, okay, we need to ration, you know, like, <laughs> well, well, let's dig a little deeper on that. Do you, it, it do you, how, how do I want to phrase this without being offensive to your wife that doesn't watch the show? She doesn't uh, watch it anyway. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> Fuck it then. Um, I, f- I feel like in my marriage, a lot of the times, even when I'm not okay, I'll say things that are very optimistic or like it, it like it's going to be okay. It'll work out. Do you oh, yeah. feel like you're that you're that sounding board yep. for your wife too? Oh yeah. Uh, every time. Uh, yeah. Pretty much every time I'm always like, well, look at it this way. It could be this way mm-hmm. or it could be a lot worse or like, Hey, we figured it out when we got through it, you know? Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, she's kind of the, the one that's like, you know, you know, the world's ending kind the of sky's thing. falling. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm the one that's like, hey, the sky's not falling, and it's it's kind of good to have that balance anyway. I agree, but I'll tell you, sometimes it gets cumbersome being that person all the time. Oh yeah, that that that's kind of like, and I don't know if other dads maybe feel that, and and this is by no means throwing shade at either of our wives. And, oh yeah, but. Uh, so, sometimes it's tough, even like when I know shit's fucked up and I know shit's going wrong and it shouldn't be going that way. It's hard to put on that, that face, mm-hmm. but I feel like I always have to put on that face mm-hmm. because somebody has to be the one that says, we'll, we'll fucking make it through this. Well, and some, sometimes a lot of, you know, I, I am that way a lot of the times, but then sometimes my wife will be like, it's okay. I know that you're not okay too Mm -hmm. which is nice um you know because then you're like you're right yeah i'm not everything you know not everything's great all the time you know um but that's like a 90 percent of the time i'm the one telling her that and smaller (laughs) amount but you know that's just because i'm i'm always like i kind of flip switches a little bit too Mm -hmm. with my with how i am so like sometimes i'll be like god everything's going shit and then i'll just be like well anyway i can't stay like that forever Mm -hmm. Like, I asked my wife whenever we're arguing, I'm like, how long are you going to be mad for her? I got over this, like, two hours ago. God. And another thing. Can't we just go watch TV together? Like, yeah. I just don't want to be mad anymore. Like, I get I get very I get flip-floppy. Yeah. And and I don't think it's... 
it's it's not a, a consistent thing. My wife my wife does a good job too of like when I'm not in a good place. Mm-hmm. You know, they just need that from us more. Yeah, I think so. Which is it's fine. It's nice to feel needed. At the very least, you know, we don't have wives that are like, "Get together, you fucking pansy, God, you <laughs> dumbass," just mean to us like. You don't have a wife like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you want to borrow my sunglasses? <laughs> <laughs> I tripped big. on the door. They're big. Uh, no, boy. but I, I mean, if that that I would say is what one of the most difficult things about being a husband is, and, and even a dad with the kids, you know, mm-hmm. even when things aren't okay, acting like they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, uh, today, uh, I was in my bedroom, which is the farthest I can get away from the living room, right? And uh, my oldest was like, Dad, and I go, hang on, because I was like grabbing clothes because I was going to shower because I was coming here. And uh, she goes, no, I need you right now. And I just bolt out there, and she's like, uh, uh, like I see my youngest, and she's like <laughs> freaking out, and she had choked. She was choking, right? And, oh my uh, fucking god, dude! Yeah, so she w- she had choked on something, and I was just like, "It's okay," because they were both freaking out, right? Mm-hmm. And I was just like, "It's okay, it's gonna be okay." But inside, I was like, "Oh my god, where was I?" You know, in my brain, I was like, "Why wasn't I here?" But in reality, I was like, "The only way that I'm gonna make them calm is if I'm calm." So I was just mm-hmm. like, "You know, you're okay," and I was rubbing her back, and I was like, "Do you want a drink?" And she's like, "Yeah," and I gave her a drink, and then I was like, "Do you want some candy?" Because like, you like. <laughs> just cheated death like <laughs> so i gave her some candy and she felt a lot better but yeah she was she had a little moment there and it's like you know that that kid will eat an entire container of uh uh cherry tomatoes you know and those are the the, the things that choke you <laughs> you know but she's so good with them you know she bites each one in half but like she was eating like chips or something like that and she was like <laughs> you know I don't know if I, yeah, we, I think we might have talked about this, but that is my biggest fucking fear yeah. as a parent. Yeah, because you know what you have to do to make them survive is you have to cut a hole in their neck. If they're choking and they can't breathe, you have to cut a hole in their neck and make it an air hole. That's the only way. I, I don't know if I believe that. If I, it's true. I, I am not going. So like in the medical shows where they stab right him. Yeah in, in, yeah, in the trachea. I got to Snopes this now. Like, yeah, yeah I so, don't. <laughs> So yeah, because, because help. like right here, there's a thing. Like, let's say that there's like a, you know a, a whatever a, a, a hard candy or whatever. It's stuck right here, and they're like, if they can't breathe, like you what gotta if you put like, the fucking hole above where the fucking object is. You gotta find where the object is, I guess. You gotta f- feel it, you know, because you can feel like a lump. But if it's it, you know, usually it's like right here. It's like right at the beginning, you know. Okay, so causing I'm a- them to be like it's it's blocking their nose, their nasal, and their their ability to breathe through their nasal and their throat. So like, mm-hmm. the the hole is usually like down. Don't you think you probably should try the Heimlich maneuver first? Well, yeah, but if it doesn't work, <laughs> like if they're turning blue, uh, actually, I'm gonna get one of those sucker things. Have you seen those? Dude, oh my god, it's in my Amazon cart right now. Yeah. But they're seventy bucks. I know. I know. I was like, make them cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm gonna save my kid's life, it should be cost effective. <laughs> Did you see the video of the guy, the guy like yeah. the mom was like choking on a hot meatball and, and she, he just went over there with that fucking sucker. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. No, d- as soon as I saw them, I put them in my Amazon cart and I'm like, baby, she's like, no, not right now. <laughs> we gotta, yeah, we gotta start making everything more like lifesavers, you know, like how lifesavers are they like, the hole they have the them? hole in them. Yeah, yeah. Like I bet that dude's punching holes in his meatballs from now on. <laughs> like he's just like never again. Oh, God, it, it's, I don't know why. But it scares the shit out of me. Yeah. It, well, there's not much to do. Like, no. Once, you know, like, and, you know, I've had like choking babies where you gotta like reach in and like, pull stuff out, you know? You're not supposed to do that either, though. Oh, because you can push it down farther. Yeah. But I've done that too. It's just like such a natural reaction. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> Get it out. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I like hook that shit, but you yeah. can also like damage the inside of their esophagus and all that shit. Mm. But I, yeah, I, I've done it. I did it to Avery. Yeah. I've done it. Both kids. And it's just such a, re- honestly, if one of my more grown kids, I, that, that'd be the first thing I'd have them open their mouth and see if I could see it and try and fucking. Yeah. I mean, I got long ass fingers too. So you got long ass fingers. I got some sausages though. So like, <laughs> I'd be like, oh. <laughs> You're choking me more, dad. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, yeah no, I, I don't that. think I've ever had like an emergency emergency. Like she was able to cough it up. It was like, you know, it wasn't like she was like, oh, and then falling over or anything, you know? So it was just like a normal choking, if that makes sense. But just like something got caught in her throat. I've never had scared. like where you're at like the restaurant, you're like, oh my God, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. It, it scares the shit out of me. And yeah. I, it's such, I, I don't know why of all things it's choking, but. Well, you know, it sucks because it's, it's, it's like, oh, it's like right there with like drowning. Like you can't breathe, even though you should be able to. Like the air is there, but you can't. Mm-hmm. You know, and then it's especially bad for kids because their esophagus is like the size of a grape. So like, you know, it and then they eat grapes and you're like, shit. <laughs> well, and my daughter fucking shovels food can ne- never stops talking. Never. <laughs> I mean, you've been around her. Oh yeah. She doesn't stop talking. Oh yeah. Her and Evie get together and it's oh yeah. yeah. You know. Um and and so she doesn't stop talking while she's eating. And I have to remind her constantly, Avery, quit talking with food in your mouth. Chew it up, swallow, then ask your question. Uh, but yeah, oh, God, it scares the shit out of me. Yeah, have you ever choked on anything, like, really bad? And like, <clears throat> I, I have. Not, not, I wouldn't say, like, real bad. But I've had, like, where something got caught in my throat. And I'm like, oh, fuck, this I can't breathe. Yeah. <laughs> um, and had to like, what actually ended up happening is I fucking, I, I was gagging on it and I fucking threw up and that's oh, what yeah. dislodged. I don't even remember what I was fucking eating. Yeah. Um, I, I had a wrapper. It was a wrapper. It went, <laughs> went into my throat. It was like a candy wrapper when I was we really just, young. Oh, okay. When you were yeah, really young. When I was really young. Like I was, well, I was like. Probably, see you, I see you was 30 just popping Jolly Ranchers and fucking oh, shit, forgetting I, to take I forgot the to take the wrapper off, off, off of that one. <laughs> Classic fat guy problems there. <laughs> oh, shit. Did I ever get to take the wrapper off again? <laughs> Just mowing through these. You found a full unopened Twinkie in his colon. <laughs> It came out. It looked just like it went in. It was identical. We put it back on the shelf. <laughs> Twinkies really can survive everything. <laughs> they can survive the bowel movements of a 30-year-old man. Oh, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry. So you're eating hard candy. Oh, yeah. And I was just, I had the wrapper in my mouth for whatever reason. Like, I was just like, you know, I don't know. I, I was just a kid and I was just like, eh, rah, 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 whatever. And then it, I, eventually it just went foomp, right into my throat. And I, ah! <laughs> like, I just had a, like, a little freak out. And then, uh, yeah, I just was, ah! and I spit it out. But I was like, for a second there, I was like, I can't breathe. So it's fucking scary. And, and that's why they put the holes at the end of pen caps now. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I know that when, when my mom, she had to get neck surgery and she was like, everything was choking her all the time. She, was just like soft food like she was just like you know because they had to go in the front you know and they had to like move the esophagus around and stuff and so like whatever happened there she just could not uh you know like she could not do like solid things like a sandwich you know like she would just be like that so she used to say that was like the thing that scared her the most was like after her surgery was choking you know because they warned her about it and then every now and again she would have like a thing where she was like oh god i'm choking you know so Yeah, that's it's definitely terrifying. a fear. Yeah. And it's in every fucking movie ever of just like in a restaurant, somebody's choking. Every like, comedy does anybody ever. know the does anybody know the Heimlich? And then they yeah. and then they hawk it up like a whole shrimp into like a lady's <laughs> cleavage, whatever. So <laughs> Or martini or whatever. Yeah, or like martini, like ooh. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh God, yeah. It terrifies the shit out of me, man. So uh I wanted to bring up a little thing because I thought it would be an interesting thing because uh, last episode we kind of talked with Jeff a little bit about UFOs and aliens mm-hmm. and there was a whole thing about, so there was like a whistleblower, right? He was a um, a airline, hang on, let me pull it up. Air Force, he was an Air Force veteran and a member of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, so the GIA and he's like a UFO whistleblower. Uh, his name's um, David Grush. Grush, I think. And he has basically said that the U.S. government has recovered numerous non-human vehicles and bodies in the last 90 years since Roswell. I buy it, man. How crazy is that? Well, yeah, the fucking government was like, we don't know what these UFOs are. like, And we have 
like on our jets jet cameras or whatever you know, like you've seen those where it's mm-hmm. like and the pilot's like what's that thing Whoa, what's going on you know mm-hmm. multiple people kind of confirming it um there is just i mean we talked about this on another episode but the infinite amount of space there is just no way yeah. that we're alone what do you think about like the orbs that you see like where it'll be like and then they like take off or like what about like cattle mutilations or like uh People who get abducted and they're like, I swear I was abducted. Bullshit. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I I think in in today's age, if somebody were to be abducted, there is no way that there is not a clip of it. Somewhere. That's probably why there hasn't really been many people going like, Yeah, I haven't been no you you always hear about it like that happened in the sixties or something like that. Like yeah. a long time ago we had a bunch of uh, you know, People get abducted or whatever, but nowadays you're like, no, never. It, it just really doesn't happen. Stopped in the nineties. Yeah. yeah. As soon as like cell phones and and shit became. Yeah, and it's like, well, I'm just gonna have to take your word for it, I guess. Yeah. I I don't. I don't think that any intelligent life form out there is the way that we perceive it in media. Yeah. Like the grays. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think that's what it looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it had probably evolved. However, it evolved, whatever its environment was to survive. Um, so yeah, I. I I don't know, man. I, well, in in Delta Green, the uh, the Greys are actually um, androids mm-hmm. that are uh, created by like an interstellar being a bunch of like elder ones who created them for various purposes of whatever that we won't understand. And they sent the grays down to like, uh, commune with humans because like they, they couldn't do it themselves. So like, they're basically like these weird Android creatures. Um, you know, man, the, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to take a hard right here. So stay with me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, the more advanced we become as a civilization, like, you, you see it now with the big push with AI. Everything is AI generated, right? Like mm-hmm. we use AI. We we fuck around with things. AI cuts this episode. Mm-hmm. It saves me hours upon hours on. I I am starting to believe more and more in the the simulation theory. Oh yeah, for sure. Than in any other one, just because of what we are capable of doing. It just seems more likely. I, I had a, uh, I had a thing that made me understand the simulation theory better, mm-hmm. and so I'll run it by you, and you can tell me if it makes sense to you. Because okay. when somebody said we're we're in a simulation, I, it took me a bit because I was like, well, why, like, why, why would I think that? Like, why would I think that we're in a simulation? And so I saw this video on the internet, and I don't know who was talking about it, but they were like, if you think about like the game The Sims, right? Mm-hmm. Those are people. They're characters, they live in this digital world, and they walk around and they do things, right? Um, well, people are trying to introduce AI and pre-generated text, uh, not pre-generated text, but like um, learning text. So like, it'll learn what it talked about before. It'll have a whole history of what it said. It'll have uh, a brain, quote unquote, like that it can remember things and recall things, right? And so to them, they're living in a simulation that they don't know about, right? So what's the difference between them and us? Where it's like, you know, how are we, you know, how do we, how do we compare to that? Like, we know that they're in a simulation, but do we know that we are not in a simulation? I think that's a really good point. Like, if you're playing Skyrim, they think dragons exist, right? And that's their world. And then we know that they're digital and they're fake and blah, blah, blah. But to us, it's just, you know, we, we don't know that we're not. And and honestly, yeah. And it makes total sense to me. Um, Again, with with the AI revolution that's been going on, uh, I saw something online about this guy that wrote a game and gave each of his NPCs in there, like, I don't want to say conscious, but like a mem- memory. So they, re- they learned things that they like to do within their space. They remembered conversations that they had had with people. They formed relationships like they're fairly close to being self-aware in 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 a simulation i I, 
it it'd be a hard sell for us to not be in one. I don't know. It yeah. it makes sense to me. Yeah. And so if you if you want a really good like kind of view of what the future could be, look like, watch Westworld season 1. It, it, it's a great fucking yeah. show. Yeah. Westworld season I didn't watch season 2. Um, I started it not as good. I was I was struggling to get started with it. That's my wife mm-hmm. and I started watching it. But season 1 we were like hook line and sinker. That was an incredible like first season of a show. Mhm. Um, and I, I really liked all of the, like, I I liked it when, who is it? Anthony Hopkins? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When Anthony Hopkins was, yeah. When he was talking to like his first creations and they had that weird uncanny Valley, you know, like that twitchy face thing where like he was talking, but like he had like, you know, subtle nuances that made it, you know, I was like, God, that's it. Like, that's like, that's what the future of like uh ai and like robotics and whatever else uh it's going to be like where we we're not able to tell the difference anymore mm-hmm. where you know they they got to a point where hey, hey we're able to run this whole you know place that uh without and you can't tell the difference mm-hmm. um you know they don't act differently and uncanny valley is like where you look at something and it's like kind of off and it makes you creeped out mm-hmm. So just a definition. Just a skosh off, though. Yeah, yeah, just Just, barely. Just barely where you look at it and you're like, "Mm, that's not human. Yeah. Did did, did you see, like, the theory about why that bugs us? Uh, Like predators, right? Yeah. Well, somebody was like, somebody somebody said that it's probably that, but, like, they also, somebody out there said that uh, one of the creepy things about why Uncanny Valley creeps us out is because we get creeped out by things that look human but aren't. Mm-hmm. So maybe in our history, we saw things that were human but aren't, mm-hmm. and it creeped us out so much that our evolution, like our DNA changed because of it, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, then I was like, oh my God, fucking skinwalkers and shit, man. <laughs> there's there's a whole genre of horror games that are based around this same principle. And I, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, developers of games take this into account when they're making games to... I mean, I mean, like we've pushed pretty far as to how far we can make something look human-like in, in games, mm-hmm. um, but they still look digitized. You can tell mm-hmm. that they're because if they push any further, it's gonna like good characters will still make us feel uncomfortable because they look too human mm-hmm. and not enough game-like that it, we'll get that same kind of effect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about holograms? Dude, I, I was promised flying cars. Yeah. And, and and holograms and all the shit we see in, in Star Wars. I thought that was such a cool... Uh, did you ever... Have you ever seen Blade Runner? I have not. Okay, so Blade Runner is actually a really good movie and it really holds up. It's it's really, really good. That's why people really like it. And then they made a new one and it was also really, really good. <clears throat> all right? They both are good movies. Um, But there's a scene in that where... This guy, the main character, he like gets a like a I've only seen it once, but he gets a prostitute, right? And then in his house, he has a hologram thing, right? That projects a different person onto this prostitute so that she looks like someone else. Hmm. And so like it it and like so like you could see like it was like uh like they were like, we need to calibrate and line up the holograms so that it and then he was it was like he was sleeping with somebody else uh that looked like somebody else so he could like so she could look like whatever and he could just pick whatever he wanted so i could pick you yeah you could pick me and put it over a lady (laughs) (laughs) jeez i I just thought that was kind of cool like i was like that's that sounds like a future thing too you know i mean any new technology we develop that industry is gonna develop with Mm -hmm. so I mean, we're at real dolls now. It's not too long before. Yeah, we're we're real dolls and auto blowers or whatever. What do you remember? As funny as it sounds, do you remember that episode of Futurama where they could download celebrities? I think so. Uh, I Fry downloaded a, a copy of Lucy Liu. Oh yeah, 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 and was in love with her. Mm-hmm. I I I think that's probably more. He did it illegally, if I remember correctly, but 
Um, I think that's probably more realistic that we'll, rather than projecting onto a prostitute, we'll probably develop some type of bipedal automaton that mm-hmm. we can program to look however we want it to look. Mm-hmm. I saw a thing that was like, when people die, like actors die, they might still posthumously appear in movies or mm-hmm. like even star in movies as like, you know, it'll get so advanced that like, oh, hey, you know, Harrison Ford died 50 years ago, but uh, he's in this new movie. Like, which I was like, that kind of like makes, it's kind of cool, but also it's kind of weird. But to me, it it's like, pay somebody else to do that. <laughs> like, don't pay the dead body of a rich person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, anyway. I, I think for the sake of art, it, it it's cool in the sense that people that don't, get the chance to finish their project can essentially be created to fin- to yeah. finish their project right yeah like a like a, a Paul Walker kind of thing yeah, yeah like Paul Walker um uh oh Carrie Fisher in the end mm-hmm. of, at the end of Star Wars mm-hmm. even even the age reduction shit on um oh god what's his name Mark Hamill Mark Hamill yeah yeah um, that, that stuff's cool just mm-hmm. to, to keep continuity. And, and I think, um, should we get to the point where it's like star Wars 79, you know, yeah. you need to move on with new characters yeah. and, yeah. and, and, but it, it, it's cool in the fact that we have the technology that we can rev engines. <laughs> we can, we have the technology to rev engines in our closed sound booth here in uh, Sacramento. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, it's it's cool that uh, that some of those actors can finish what they started. Yeah, and that's the that's like the only way that I kind of like that. I don't like the idea that like you know Steven Seagal is going to star in a movie in a hundred years. No, I mean there's there's some I'd act- watch the fuck out of it though because <laughs> watching Steven Seagal movies is really funny. <laughs> so some actors it'd be cool for though, right? Like I don't know, I. I I miss the hell out of Robin Williams. I would, oh, yeah. I, you know, seeing a, a new good Robin Williams Williams movie, which which is something that my kids will never really get to experience. Like they get to mm-hmm. see like his old stuff, but uh, seeing like a a new comedy from him would been would have been great. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But should you do it? Yeah, yeah. Is that's, the other is, is the other Jeff thing. Goldblum in Jurassic Park? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> never ask yourself if you should do it. <laughs> Who's funding those parks? I don't. I don't fuck Every time that. they come out with a new one, I'm like, "What? Who is it?" Those are billions of dollars. But yeah, yeah. They're, they're they're are they too big to fail? <laughs> it's like the banks. Yeah, is 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 like you know Amazon's not going to go out of business. Is that the same? Like they're too big to fail. Did you watch the new trilogy? Uh oh, let's see. I watched the first two. I didn't watch the third one. Okay. I'm not going to spoil it for you. I know that the third one's not great. It's not great. Yeah. And they were like, every five seconds, Chris Pratt is just, whoa. Whoa now. Settle down, Raptors. I was really, Dominion is what it's called, if I'm not mistaken. I was really, really excited for it. I thought um, the first one of the series was really good. I Mm -hmm. I liked it. Yeah, I thought it was good. Um, The second one was, was I, I seem to remember it was pretty all right. Like I remember, like was, I like the I like the big thing jumping out of the water and eating the the big whale or whatever. Like, yeah, it like was that it, kind of stuff. The second one, if I'm not mistaken, it was the black market, wasn't it? Oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. where they were selling the dinosaurs. Yeah, after I think the park I th- had, Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I I don't know. Sometimes sequels just shouldn't be made. Yeah, like. Sometimes season two or three or four shouldn't be made of shows, you know. And and Westworld, yeah, <laughs> Westworld's a great example. Um, How I Met Your Mother, you could have done it in one season and fucking been that. No, great show. I loved How I Met Your Mother. I've never Except- seen it. <gasps> I've never watched it. <laughs> I've never seen it. Okay, what about Scrubs? Scrubs. I watched all the Scrubs when I uh, when I in two thousand ten. They need to stop <laughs> a they, season early. They need to stop one season early. I yep. agree. I agree. When they were like, they were like, this is it, guys. This is the end. We're done. Yep. And then they were like, 
Actually, one more season. I was like, Ugh, that's ABC bad. bought us, and we're gonna do one more. That's bad. Yeah, it was real bad. It's like that show was so like that's it sucked me in. It was so like funny and like new mm-hmm. and whatever. And I, I kind of picture us like JD and Turk a little bit. Oh yeah, guy love between <laughs> two guys. Guy love. <laughs> hey, did I tell you that I uh, recently got kicked out of a secret cooking society? You did not. Yeah, they didn't like that I spilled the beans. Oh, well, no, I got to find my joke. <laughs> <clears throat> Jumping right into the jokes. I, I I try to catch you off guard. Yeah. I know, I and I, I never do, because I'm just like, let me get my glasses so I can read get my, my dad joke. Out. Did you hear about what happened in Kenya today? Kenya, no. Can you fit these nuts in your mouth? <laughs> That's getting you back for Candace. <laughs> Yeah, one of the first couple episodes of Impossible Landscapes. I'm like, uh, her name is Candace. Yeah, and I just have one more question for you, Candace. Can this dick fit in your <laughs> mouth? And I was just like, <laughs> threw that in there and got caught me off guard. God. I got you back. <laughs> you got a real bad case of ligma. What? So you got a real big case of ligma. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You can lig my balls. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, my daughter says that all the time. So about sugma. Oh no, sugma balls. Don't tell her what they are. Does she not know? No, no, no. Like, don't give Claire more ideas. I'm gonna give Claire all the ideas. Because <laughs> Claire, get your dad to say Candace. She runs through the gambit of it. These nuts, ligma balls. Uh, uh, you know. Yeah. Just keep saying them over and over again. <laughs> We'll give her new ones into a rotation. <laughs> uh, yeah. Kids just want to swear all the time. Mm-hmm. What they want. Like, they just want to swear every day. They're like, let me swear. I'm 11. It's not <laughs> as cool as they think it is. No, it's not. I never really cared about it. I was always like a heck dang it until I was older. I didn't really either. I swear, I swore when I wasn't around my mom. Yeah, like when you're in your room. Yeah, mm-hmm. or like playing a game or whatever. Yeah. Even now, I I feel like I have to censor myself and like I have to make the active choice to be like, well, that report is subpar and not like you're a fucking idiot. Do it better. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, here, I'll hit you with one more joke. Okay, hit me, and then we'll sign off. Cause that that one was just a that was just a <laughs> truly uh, hook line and sinker. Uh, how do you get a hundred math teachers in a room that only fits ninety nine people? I don't know. You carry the one. Oh, that's a good one. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, we hope you enjoyed our squirrel talk, our UFO talk, our tangential talk. Try get trying to get a couple beers in us, and we just we get all over the place. Really interesting co- topics of conversation. If uh, if if you're both of us and we're talking to each other, hopefully yeah. you enjoyed listening, um, and maybe you learned a couple things. Uh, look up that UFO whistleblower. I wonder what the, what's going on with that. I want to know like what else is coming out next. You know, that's what I want to know. So right into the show. If you're like, hey, I'm a whistleblower too. And I like your show. If you want to uh, whistle blow on our show, hey, yeah, hit you- us up. How insane would that be? Like, hey, I used to work for the CIA and I want to be on your show. This is the best option I could find. <laughs> <laughs> we'll listen to you. Yeah. We really will. Yeah, we'll pop you on. We'll, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get you up on the Zoom. <laughs> or maybe you just need a place to hang out. <laughs> Troy's house is available. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> <laughs> CIA whistleblower, Mitch Carter. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for uh, tuning in, and we'll uh, catch you next time. Make sure you follow all these social networks up here. Oh, that too. Yeah. I'm a bad host. Uh, Yeah. Follow these social networks. They're right here, 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 here. Right over Kevin's nipples. Right here. Uh, And, uh, yeah, anyway, we'll catch you next time. Yeah, I got to go mow my lawn. You do. (laughs) Now that your mower works. (laughs) (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye-bye.